All right. I was asked to do record a demo video on the easiest way to hang a bike. All you need is two rubber hooks, like such. They're called six-inch bike hooks. They're like two bucks a piece, maybe four. Um, you can get smaller hooks, but you run into clearance issues trying to get the tire over this hook because it's so close to the ceiling. These bike hooks are much better um, and frankly makes it easier to hook because it hangs down so far. Uh, so for this project you need two of those. Um, you need one to as many as you want. Typically I just do one, although today I'm going to get fancy and do two. Um, these are just, I call a, a wood screw threaded uh, eye bolt. Uh, very cheap, buck a piece. And I'm going to be fancy, so I'm doing two today. Um, and then we're going to attach a uh, swivel pulley. Looks like such. Very simple. This is a 30 pound capacity, more than enough. We're just going to use it to hinge a bike. Uh, the swivel is important. This part right here. The cheap ones just have a ring on top, and then they tend to get bound up when the rope gets messed up. So if you get the swivels, they'll self align themselves, no problem. So I've got a pulley for each of my two bolts. Um, you can just tie the rope to the bike, or uh, you can make a loop and uh, do it that way, or uh, you can get fancy like me and uh, just use one of these little jobs. Just hook it on some piece of metal on the bike. Um, typically I hook underneath, there's some um, metal tubes on the, underneath the side of the seat that this hooks on very nicely. Um, this is 250 pound capacity. Um, this makes it easy to slip on and off. And then you need, I don't know what these things are called, I'd call it a bolt, a bolt clevis it's for tying off ropes. Again, very cheap. Um, looks like such. Uh, don't get a small one. They tend, these ears tend to shear off over time of use. Um, plus, the bigger ones makes it easier to wind up because you're going to have a lot of excess rope once the bike is stored. So this makes it easy. Every pass winds like six inches of rope. So get the idea. The last thing you need is a good quality nylon or polyester rope. Uh, 3 16 is my uh, choice. Um, normally I just get it cut the length at Lowe's, but Menards, they just sell it in bundles. I bought a 100 foot bundle for 7 bucks. So, I mean, we're talking here $12. Um, that's really all you need. As far as tools go, uh, what do you need? Well, you need a drill to drill the holes for uh, the thing, the four things you're going to thread in, plus to shoot two screws. Any drill will work. Um, you need a knife, a nice utility knife, works just fine, pair of scissors, whatever. Um, to put uh, these rings in, you can use a pair of pliers, but the easiest way, and I'll show later, you just thread a screwdriver through and use it as a lever. Very simple. Um, optional, but stud finder is the way to go. Um, you can find studs by knocking if you're good. Well, what I used to do before I had a stud sensor, I just um, put a real small drill bit on a drill and just kept drilling until I hit something solid. And then I worked my way around until I figured out the middle. You can do it that way too. I did it that way for years in areas where I didn't care how many uh, holes I had. Uh, marker or pens, very handy for marking. Uh, again, very simple. Um, this is the world's best stud, stud sensor ever. It's called a Pro Sensor 710. They've been making this thing for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. Uh, it's only 50 bucks. Um, this is the only one I've ever found that worked, and this is my fourth one. So I know, you know a little bit about that. So there's that. Um. Alright, so the first thing you have to do is we need to know the hook spacing. That will be the contact point of where the tire hits the ground on the front and back. Measurement is not critical. It's okay to be longer, but you don't want to be shorter. And, uh, this is, I'm just going to guess about there to about. Oh, there. It's like about 40 inches. Um, the other way you can do it is you can just measure from center to center, but I don't trouble with that. If I measure it center to center there, I come up with 39. So 40 is pretty much on the money. So it's okay to be a little bit longer than 40, but if you're a little shorter, the, the wheel will want to stay turned, and it'll be hard to fold up. So you want to be at least 40 or 
up to two or four inches longer. So 42 is fine too. Okay, so I'm going to prepare my drill. Um, you can do all sorts of goofing around, but honestly, I just hold the drill up. The drill should be slightly smaller than not the thread part sticking out, but the, the part that's solid. The threads are wider than that to give the threads plenty of meat, and you want the solid part of the thread to be um, uh, pushing into the little tooth, so that's too small. Um, let's check this out. There is scientific ways to do this. I just eyeball it. I have them for years, and it's fine. This, this is not that complicated. Um, and actually, none of those work. So I've got a nicer set over here. Those are just my junk drills. These are more newer junk drills. I just, the ones for the garage, I just buy them, and when they're shot, they're shot. So, what am I going to use here? Here's a quarter inch drill. This is probably a 3 8 thread, so that's about right. Yep, perfect. And then for this here, I'm just going to do, do, do. I'm gonna eyeball this too. I would say that that's probably a quarter inch. So I will use a 532nd. Sure, that's fine. Again, not rocket science here. Um, you just want to have lots of bite to the thread and the temptation is to stop at the ceiling but you have to remember that the first five eighths of the ceiling is drywall which the thread doesn't bite in which would leave you only thread from here down so what you actually have to do is screw this thing in five eighths inch past where the thread stops so you're actually going to be just about burying this thing um, so you have to remember that the thickness of the ceiling drywall is not structural it's just there to look pretty so you need to get a good solid bite on this hook because over time it tends to wiggle back and forth. And if you don't have a solid bite, one day you'll go to hang the bike and it'll fall and whack you in the face. And not a good idea. So let's take these over to the ladder. I've already measured with my stud sensor. And I'll just repeat that a little for the sake of this video. Basically all I did, very simply, use my stud sensor here. This one has 13 lights on it, and it just lights up however many, wherever the stud is. I moved it back and forth until I had a good eyeball, and I put a tick mark. But I know the center of the stud, so I did that down there. Um, then, once I found the center of the stud, I just used the tape measure. Again, accuracy is not critical here. And from where my first hole is going to be, I laid the tape measure, and then I came down here, and at 41 inches, I put a cross mark right here. Then I went back, got my stud sensor, and I've got the length. I just need to know this direction to find the stud. I just brought my stud sensor back again. <coughs> went back and forth until I found the stud. Nothing to it. Um, so I suggest you lean off to the side because you're going to get uh, sawdust in your face. Oh, that's on slow. We want to run fast. I just bury the drill all the way in whether you need to or not. It's not going to hurt the ceiling. The ceiling joist. And you get your hook. Now it's important when you're doing this that you understand which way the bike is going to swing. So in my case, the bike is going to swing up and the handlebar is going to be over here. So I want the hooks to face that way so the tires don't run into trouble. Ugh. This is getting hard to spin, but that's no problem. This is an old-fashioned trick that works great. Like I said, you really want to bury this bad boy in the ceiling. So over time, it might come loose on you a little bit, and that's okay. You can always screw it back in, but if you only had a couple threads biting, it will come crashing down, and you'll get hurt, or you'll break your bike. Especially if you have a nice bike. So, there's hole number one, hole number two. <sighs> The reason I'm backing the drill out every so often is the threads get full. You have to let it off so let the material that's stuck in the, the flutes fall away. Otherwise you'll uh, stop making forward progress on your hole. Okay. Very simple. Hook number two. 
You see, I'm just threading into the drywall here. <laughs> as soon as it gets hard, I just get out my uh, lever and piece of cake. No effort. <clears throat> Pry bars work fine, long screwdrivers, piece of pipe, whatever. And you can see I'm going nuts here, really putting these tight to the ceiling. Alright, so now i got my hooks. So now we're going to put the pivot on here. The way you mount these bikes is you do the back tire first. Piece of cake. And it's easy just to push up. There you go. Okay, the next thing we need to do is figure out where our first pulley is going to be. A lot of people only need one pulley, but uh, I'm getting fancy because I don't want the cleat attached to the shelf. I want it attached out of the way. So to do that, it's very simple. All you do is pivot your bike up the way it would be. And you just eyeball straight up to the ceiling where that's going to be. That's going to be about where that hole is. So I'll just make a rough mark here just to give me an idea. Uh, yep, that's right. So now that I know where that is, I'm going to just get my uh, trusty old stencil stud sensor out here and see where the nearest stud. So that's a stud right there. What's going this way? Oh, that's pretty far. Okay. Okay, so there's my stud there. So I know there's a stud running this way. Let's bring the spikes back up. And I think that'll work just fine. So I'm going to put it right there. Switch drill bits because this drill bit's too big. Now the easy way to, uh, to see, you, you might be tempted to use one that's a hook, but trust me, it's just going to fall off. So the best way to do this, the vise is not mandatory, but being as how I only have one arm, it kind of is for me. The way I do these, I use a vise grips, just a special kind of pliers that holds on insanely strong. And all you do is... Uh, Grab on really good, and I just bent that bad boy right open. It's not that strong a metal. Not that way. Then you take your swivel loop, and you hook that on. And the easiest thing to close it is just take a hammer and whack it shut. Nothing to it. You can also hold this end with a pair of pliers and bend this open with another pair of pliers. You can do it with a screwdriver if you don't have uh, uh, vice grips. I mean, if you have trouble bending it for whatever reason, um, you can also um, very easily just get a, a propane or a map gas torch, something that would look like this. A torch like this, they're 40 bucks. Handy as heck to start fires too. And you can just get the metal hot and then it bends open even easier. So. Uh, however you want to bend it open is uh, just fine. But sometimes they're different. But the point is you just want to bend it open. You don't need to bend it open a lot. Just enough to uh, slip, slip that in there. There we go. Just like that. Stick my pulley on there. It doesn't matter how tight it is. No. Just enough that uh, it can't slip off. So this is kind of what you end up with. That'll never slip off there, ever. So you're good to go there. Okay, so now that I have my uh, location, <sighs> is pretty easy. The most important thing is that you're in the middle of the stud. How do you know you're in the middle of the stud? Uh, trial and error. Just need to learn how to use the stud sensor, but the idea is you go one way 
you mark the outside edge, you go the other way, you mark the edge, and it's somewhere in the middle. But you want to make sure that this screw is, is into solid wood. I'll go one more time here. That's good enough. Okay. And again, we'll use the same screwdriver trick. Um, And if you find it even too tough to do with a screwdriver, then your hole is too small. Um, if you find it, you can thread it all the way in there without uh, any assistance, and your hole is too big, and it won't hold. So, um, just uh, somewhere in between. Like I said, I, I, lay the, the, I look at the solid part of the shank where the threads are, try to pick a drill that is slightly smaller than that by eye. Um, or you can just measure the shank with a caliper, if you have a caliper. Uh, a lot of times when you buy them, the packaging actually says what the shank size is. This looks like quarter inch to me, or well, I'm not really sure. Uh, so you can see I'm having a harder and harder time, which is what you want. Uh, I got my big screwdriver out here. Lots of leverage. Piece of cake. And again, you want to bury this guy in the stud because I don't want this thing coming out either. That's why I bought such a long one. I can uh, long one. I can uh, long one. I can uh, bury it to my heart's content. All right. So there will be a rope that comes down from here that hooks onto the seat, and that's going to pull it up. So okay. Uh, so in this garage. Where I'm going to be working here, there's actually already a bike, my bike, that's stored here. I'm putting this one up for my daughter today. <sighs> so I'm just going to eyeball one direction. doesn't even matter if the rope runs straight. So I'm just going to look. So there's actually a crack in the ceiling. So again, I know I want my pulley to be left to right here and then all we'll do is we'll just find a uh, stud to tap into um, I believe looking at the one for my bike it's probably right there oh, there's a stud right there swing your screwdriver all the way around it a little. So you just kind of have a painstaking process of putting one of these in a half turn at a time. But you can see how far I got that one buried. That one I put up three years ago I think. While I'm doing this, we can talk about the rope. The reason you want the nylon or polyester rope is it doesn't fray. And if it does fray, the fray doesn't propagate. So you don't end up with a catastrophic failure. You can see where the rope is starting to fail. And have plenty of time to uh, repair it. It's very cheap. It has a million little teeny strands all woven together. And uh, it is very strong and tough for what it is. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is attach my cleat here. So often when you buy hardware at the store, it comes with screws. Those they assume those screws are typically assuming that you're going to attach it to solid wood. Keep in mind, at least a half inch thick of drywall, which will do nothing for the screw. Uh, so I just never use the store screws because frankly they're not very good. Um, these are two inch screws. Um, so you're going to lose a quarter inch just in the thickness here, another half inch of the wall thickness before you even hit wood. So a two inch screw minus three quarters inch is an inch and a quarter. So that basically buries the entire threaded part of the screw, not coming out. Um, there's lots of ways to mark it. Uh, my favorite way is just to do this. Just put the cleat where you want it. Just put a dot. There you go. There you go. Here's my impact guy. You can do this with a drill. 
bro. Hell, you can do it by hand, but I'm lazy. In fact, guns are my favorite, so that's how I'm doing this. Very easy. You don't have to pre-drill. I do that because I'm one-handed and makes it easier to put in, so that's why I do it. But you don't have to. Well, uh, the goal here is not to crack tighten the screw. It's just to get it enough so that I can uh, drill the other hole out. Let's get it roughly level. Again, doesn't have to be that great. Don't have to pre drill, but it does make it easier to shoot the screw. Sometimes you're, uh, well, in this case, it's a corner. There's a little bit of, there's a metal edge protector buried in the mud here. And it's pretty hard to get a screw through for some people. All right, it's not going anywhere. What I do now is I'm going to run this rope. It's not permanent. I just need to get an idea of how long it needs to be. So I know I'm going to be about here. Probably can't see me, but that's all right. You're going to want to leave some over here so you can grab it and start pulling the bike up. So. No big deal. I always leave my rope a little too long and I can always cut more off. But you can never remove material. <clears throat> all right, so if you want to attach that hook to the bike so that it never comes off. The easy way is just to tie one of these knots. Now you end up with something like that. The reason that that works well is uh, as you pull harder on the rope it actually makes the knot around the hook tighter. So it will never slip off. The only downside of doing it this way is that you have to uh, thread the entire rope. But you end up with an attachment to that hook that will never let go. Very strong. Now you see how this is fraying here? I'll show you a quick easy trick for that. Check this out. So I learned this trick from my dad many many years ago. Um, he did it with a uh, cigarette lighter, um, but uh, blowtorch is faster, but really any, you can, any heat source is fine. What you do is you uh, cut it fresh, and then to keep it from spraying, what you do is you get it so it's just starting to melt real good, then you lick your fingers with a lot of spit, and you'll wipe it with your fingers. You can do it with a glove too, but you actually, with your fingers wet, you can actually shape it a little, so watch this. and you never get burned, no problem. And that will never fray. It looks kind of ugly, but you know what, it won't fray because I just melted the fibers together. Piece of cake. Here's the other end I cut. Let's uh, melt that real quick too over here. Also makes it a lot easier to thread. You'll see the stores, that, like, the big box stores, they just have a hot blade. essentially does the same thing, but there you go. Now you've got a nice tip that will never fray and it's easy to thread through your pulleys. Uh, now I can just thread this bad boy on, starting with hooking it to the bike. Like I said, there's metal uh, wires, or metal, thin metal things under most bike seats. Perfect for that. My the other two bikes I have hanging, I just have that knot I showed earlier around the handlebar. Um, but eventually, I think the seat makes more sense. Okay. You can 
can actually see the cleat for my bike right there, but my bike's broken at the quick shot. That's all right. So you want to leave enough here that um, you can easily pull it from the ground. It's probably too long, but that's all right. The other thing I do too here is um, I put a knot to keep it from go fall falling too far on the other side. Um, because the knot will keep it from going through the pulley. I can just work a knot right up there, no problem. A little closer. If you had two hands, this would be a lot easier, but that's all right. You know, now the knot, you can still probably pull through there if you pull real hard. It's not meant for that. It's just meant to keep it so that it doesn't go shooting off the pulleys. So at this point, um, I'm going to position the camera so you can kind of see how this thing works. So you just lift your bike up there, attach your rope. And uh, what I normally do is you can use the cleat to help you. Or whatever. Once you get it tight, you just maintain tension. Get three or four wraps on it. Mm -hmm. And at this point, a baby could hold it. That could slip off, so you do a couple of these reverse loops, just like they do in boating. Do two or three of those. There's my knot. And uh, that bad boy is never coming out of there, and you have a bike that's not in your way. So, then I just wrap the rest up so it doesn't hit me in the face. And it's up. If you actually look, I'm standing underneath the bike. I'm six foot tall. This is an eight foot garage ceiling, pretty standard in America. I've got nine inches or so above my head. Clearly enough working room. It doesn't interfere with my lights. And, uh,. In this particular case, when this uh, when my daughter gets bigger, all I have to do is just take that hook, move it back for the longer bike, and just put the hook back in. That's you know her her little younger children's bikes. As she got bigger ones, I just move the hook down. Those the bikes just hang from the ceiling because they're so small that you can walk under them. But for uh, more of an adult-sized bike, um, no problem. So and you can see that the. The tire actually turns when you when you crank it up and won't stay flat. That's to be expected. Um, I don't really see a problem with it, so I just leave it. So, so I hope that helps. So hopefully the video actually came out, but that's the gist of how you can do it. Um, and that puts both my cleats on that header over there, rather than coming down to my shelf where the cable's in the way all the time. So, cool.